Welcome back to Assisted Living Investing, where we talk about all things assisted living investing, how to get started in this industry, how to build your own beautiful assisted living mansion, how to run your operations company, and how to set yourself up with financial freedom while serving the people in your community. So today is gonna to be awesome because I'm gonna be sharing behind the scenes. Here are the numbers. Here's what it looks like to really do my style of deal, to do this luxury memory care mansion in a 16 bed, having um, the highest level of care and therefore expenses and how I can still make great money from this kind of deal. So I'll show you, here's my numbers. I'll put it all into perspective for you so that you can see real life, here's what it looks like. And when I first got into this a mm, few years ago, there I had a first, my first coach, I asked him the same kind of question. And uh, he was telling me he was making on his multiple houses, you know, 10, 1,000 on this house, 30,000 on this house. And I just didn't see how the numbers could make sense. I was looking at his income, I was looking at what his rents were, and I just didn't see how it was possible. So I asked him point blank, like, hey, can you show me your numbers? Can I see what's going on here? Because it's just not adding up in my head. And I, you know, I was new to this and I'm like, okay, well maybe there's probably things I'm missing. And you know, he gave me a, a smile and a wink and said, you know, I don't even tell my family those kind of numbers. So I, I just can't share that with you. And then he moved on to the next thing. And I was like, ah, that just doesn't sit right with me, right? Like if I want to get on board with investing in assisted living, I want to know this is a real thing that I can actually afford to take care of my family, that I'm going to get a great return on this and that, you know, everybody is safe. My investors are safe. I'm safe. And then I can really afford to have a great product because I think that's really where a lot of this comes down to is people cut corners on so much of these expenses because they haven't, they haven't done their numbers on the front side. They did not budget appropriately for their income and expenses. There's a lot of holes in their uh, PNL that they did not account for. So at the end of the day, there's either no profit or they have cut down their product so much that they're trying to skip by and therefore not taking care of their grandmas and grandpas properly. So today, let's show you what it looks like. Here are my numbers on my 16 beds. And I'll come at it from this perspective. There's really two things that I'm trying to do. My goals. My goals are to make $500,000 a year from every one of my mansions. 500K is my goal. Additionally, I am also trying to not be a slave to my business. I am trying to not be there around the clock. Laura and I, we own and operate Platinum Resort in Georgetown, Texas, and we run a two manager system. So we have two managers there um, around the clock on salary. So at least every day, there's one person there, one person in charge. And then a couple days a week, there's two people there. So it creates insulation between myself and Laura and the drama and the ups and downs and the no call, no shows and the falls and all the things that happen in this type of end of life business because I am solving a big problem. My problem is making me a higher uh, level of rent, so therefore there's gonna be more drama, right? If I wanted to be a less drama type of business, I could probably charge half as much, but that's not getting to me to my first goal of making 500 grand a year. So let's come at it from that perspective. I wanna show you, here's a model, how to make the 500 grand a year or more, and how to take your time back. Because Laura and I are in a place now where we are pretty passive in this business where we go in one day a week and sometimes I don't go in at all for, for a month or two, but Laura, she's usually there one day a week checking on our staff, checking on our residents, doing the, uh, the manager meeting, going through our KPIs. And this has really set myself, my wife, my family up for the life that we really wanted, the life that we dreamed of, being able to have an abundance of money to be able to save and put money aside and continue to reinvest. But first and foremost, to spend lots of time with our kids, with our family, and that's really what it comes down to for me. So if that is your same goal, let me show you a path and a model for how to do this. So I'm gonna show you case by case, kind of going through my PNL. Here's what it looks like for my 16 bed memory care mansion. All right, so here is my PNL. I have my 16 bed assisted living, and I charge about $8,000 per month per room per resident. Okay, so I'm going to first start off by showing you here's what it looks like at 8,000. I'm gonna go through my expenses and put it all in perspective for you. Then we'll come back and we'll show you, okay, if you were doing a $7,000 a month bed rate, what would that look like? 
and what would your profit be? And then we'd fill in from there. If you're doing a $6,500 a month bed rate and all the same expenses, what would your profit be? So let's take a look here. Now I am trying, as I said, to solve a bigger problem and therefore charge a higher rent. I'm solving a bigger problem. I should get a bigger reward. So for me in my market, uh, that's about $8,000 a month for assisted living and memory care. So again, we are trying to hit the end of life, the people that have the biggest problem there, and therefore they will pay the most amount for that. So I am charging on average about $8,000 a month. At 16 beds, that's $128,000 a month. Okay, so here's what, this is my income, here's what my expenses are. Now I'm going to break down these expenses and uh, kind of just tell you what, what we have in, inside of them grouped, okay? So in my payroll, this is what I include in my payroll. I have two caregivers at $18 an hour, and for my market, it's about 16, so I pay about $2 extra over what the average is. So two, uh, two caregivers, 24 hours a day, so 48 hours a day times 30 at $18 an hour. That's what I'm including in this number, as well as two managers, two managers, on salary included in this number. And then I have a chef. I have one chef at 40 hours a week at $20 an hour. So I have all three of those items in my payroll plus payroll tax at about 11%. So I'm averaging about $41,730 per month for payroll. Okay, now what about my building? My building, this is a 10,000 square foot mansion. It is a high-end, beautiful product and it cost me about $2.2 million to build. And we are unfortunately in a place where interest rates are pretty high right now, so I'm gonna show you what those numbers look like. So in my building, I have $13,812. Now, that is my mortgage, and that's my taxes. And here in Texas, we pay a higher tax rate, and that's kind of what it is. But all of that is included in there, $13,812 for my $2.2 million mansion. Okay, now I have insurance. My insurance, I budget every month $2,550, and that's three separate types of insurance. That's my property insurance, that is my liability insurance in case I get sued, and then is also my work comp insurance based on the payroll that I'm showing you here. Then there's my utilities. My utilities are all of my various utilities, water, electric, gas, um, internet, all those things, right? About $2,060 per month, that's what I pay. Then my food and my supplies. So my food is the majority of this. It's over 5,000 of it, maybe pushing closer to 6,000. So that is my food for my grandmas and grandpas. And again, we have a chef, we have a uh, higher end menu on what we serve, but because we have a chef, therefore we are cutting back on some grocery bills because it's all scratch made. We're not making, we're not making pre-made foods that may be more expensive. So that's the foods, that's also all of our PPE, that's also all of our activities and supplies and office goods, all of those things in this number here. Then I have my hiring. My hiring runs me about $700 a month. Now that may be job boards and sometimes it up, ups and downs, it ebbs and flows, right? So that's, that's job boards. That's uh, sometimes you have to do uh, uh, you know, background checks and these things have different fees. And there's also uniforms. So on average, it'll over the course of a year be about $700 a month. And then same with maintenance. I budget about $1,000 a month. And every month I don't spend $1,000, but sometimes over the course of a year, I spend about $12,000 a month on maintenance. That's fixing things wrong with the building. That's also my landscaping and things like that. So all of these things are my expenses. Okay, that's about $68,812. So I have my top line, my income of $128,000 Minus six, this almost about 69 grand. That leaves me with a profit of about, or I guess it's not about, it's, it's exactly $59,188. So I'm blowing my goal of 500 grand a year out of the water, right? My goal of 500 grand a year it equates to this number right here. 41,667, so I'm way over that. I'm almost at 60K. This is 60K from one mansion. 60K is a life-changing amount. I mean, half that is a life-changing amount, but now with this kind of deal, you have a life-changing amount and then a whole life-changing amount in your savings account to invest, right? That's really what I love about this. I am setting up my family for success, and then I'm also setting up my kids for success by having 
the ability to save lots of money to buy more assets. So this is what I'm looking at here. $59,000 um, a month. It's a, it's a crazy amount of money. Now, keep in mind, I did not put any vacancy in there. And again, we run a memory care mansion that has a huge wait list. So on average, we are full most of the time. Now, we're not 100% full, but I'm also not counting for the move-in fees that we have, right? We charge a, a move-in fee every time we have a new resident. So that does make up for it. All right. So that was me showing my numbers at $8,000 a month. But what if your market can't support $8,000 a month? Let's talk about what it looks like at $7,000 a month. Okay. So at $7,000 a month, we have 16 grandmas and grandpas. We are now at 7,000 times 16. That's 112,000. That is still a great, great income number. Now, for the sake of showing this, I made zero changes to the expenses. It is literally the exact same numbers on my eight. So I'm just going to show you. Here's what it looks like if you wanted to not cut any expenses. You wanted to have the same gorgeous product, offer all the care and amenities that you could get at one of the big smelly facilities, and you want to do it in this memory care mansion, and you happen to charge $7,000 a month. So the exact same expenses. Here's what you're going to be at. This is $43,188, 43K. This puts you over 500 grand a year. This is still with two managers. This is setting you up for a lifestyle that will allow you for financial freedom. It'll allow you to take care of your family. It'll allow you to go to all your kids' events and games. This is a winning deal right here. Even at $7,000 a month, if you can compete with all the big facilities and you could say to daughter, hey, I can give everything that the big facilities can and they're charging more than 7,000, you might as well come over to me because we are smaller, we're more intimate, we have better care and we're only $7,000 a month. So that's what it looks like at 7,000. Now, what about even less? What if you market could not support 7,000? Let's take a look next at $6,500 a month. So here's what our numbers look like if you were having $6,500 for your bed rate. You'd have 6,500 times 16 beds, that's $104,000 a month. Still a fantastic number for income. I think that for this model, you really should not be under 100K a month. So you can drop it down another couple hundred bucks per month, per resident, per rent, but anything more than that, I don't think you would go for this model. I think you need to be at least at 100 grand a month. So at 104 here, $6,500 a month, let's show you what these numbers look like. So on this round, I did make two changes to the expenses. Now, these only two items that changed. I changed the payroll and I dropped my caregivers by $2 per hour. So I went from 18 to 16. And then I also went from two managers to one manager. So if you're going to be having a lower income from um, perhaps not providing the top, top, top notch service, you may have a little bit lower expenses on these two items, one being payroll and the second being building. So the building I took from our 10,000 square foot mansion to our 8,000 square foot mansion. So really it's the, the same thing, just bedrooms are a little bit smaller. So if that is the case, then your mortgage and your building, your taxes are dropping by about another two grand here. So these are the only two changes. The insurance, utilities, food, hiring, and maintenance are all the same. So this is still a fantastic product that you are not cutting any corners on. This is what it looks like here, okay? $104,000 in income. You have about $60,000 plus dollars in expenses. Now your profit is $43,000. $240. You are still beating this goal of our 500 grand a year. You are more than this $41,666 a month, right? So this is why I love this kind of deal. I think that there's a lot of opportunity in this space and it really goes back to the right size because anything too big, right? The You're talking 40 beds or these big facilities, Man, nobody wants to be in those facilities. You're not going to be able to fill your beds. 16 beds, you can fill it all day long, right? You're bringing in people that they're only going to pass, you know, every... They're, my people are here with me for, for two, three, four, five plus years, right? So I'm only selling a new bed, you know, every couple months, a couple new beds a year. So your income is stable. You're able to um, have a very high and stable income. So therefore, you can afford 
all of these expenses to have a fantastic product. So if you were going too big, I don't think you can do that. If you're going too small, there's just not enough beds. There's no way you can get an income anywhere above six figures, right? And therefore you can't hire the chef, you can't hire the managers. Now that means two different things. It means your bed rates are lower because you can't provide all the care and amenities that the competition, the big smelly facilities can. And also the second most important thing is you are becoming a slave to your business. You are there when things go wrong because when there's a problem, there's not a manager, it's just you. So this is really why I love this niche and I, I hope this is helpful for you, to you because I wanted to share behind the scenes, here's really what the numbers look like. If somebody would have told me this on the front side of my journey on this, it would have made it way easier. I would have been like, hey, here's a model that I can follow. Here's some real numbers, these make sense. Math is math, right? You're not gonna change it. So this is something that you could do, right? Anyone can do one of these 16 beds. You can do this with commercial zoning in any city in the country. There's no city that's gonna stop you from having 16 beds if you are zoned commercial or in multifamily or in some of these other zonings that you can do 100, so why can't you do 16? But you don't take this model into a neighborhood. You don't go and buy a house in a residential zone neighborhood and say, I'm gonna do an addition and put 16 beds in there because most likely the city's gonna block you, but you need to know how to do this and where you can do this. Right, so if you want more information on this, we just released a free training course. It's my foundations course, and I walk through the entire process of how we start a new assisted living mansion, how you can build one of these things. So I will put that in the comments below, and uh, check that out, and I hope to see you all soon.